Oh, patient reported outcomes refer to assessments of a patient's experience that is or are obtained directly from patients without any interpretation by clinicians or other individuals. They express how patients view their health and their well-being. Uh, in quality improvement, they add to our understanding of the total care experience by providing an assessment of health from the patient's perspective. So examples of patient-reported outcomes are things like pain, fatigue, anxiety, functional measures like sleep function, sexual function, physical function, and then social measures of how well um, I would rate my social relationships, social isolation from a child's perspective, relationships with families, etc. So they complement typical clinical measures of disease, disorder, and biochemical measures of outcome. But asking patients one question to evaluate a complex phenomenon like pain provides highly unreliable information. So if you want a level of precision and a letter level of validity around your measure, you need to ask in the range of about four to eight questions. And uh, we've now done a number of studies to show that with four to eight questions for PROMS, you can evaluate someone's pain, someone's fatigue, someone's sexual function, et cetera. And how do you know it's valid? Because if you ask the same questions today and the same questions three days from now, you tend to get the same answer. That relates to reliability. And also, um, we do what are called validation studies to show that when the um, patients report in a certain way, it relates to future outcomes. So patients who have low levels of well-being actually have a much higher risk of future mortality. That's been shown now in, in, in dozens and dozens of studies. One of the ways of characterizing an instrument, whether it's a machine that measures your red blood cell level or it's a blood pressure cuff or it's a patient reported outcome, is to estimate its reliability. And the reliability estimates for blood pressure assessment are actually worse than the reliability estimates for patient reported outcomes because of all the error that can be introduced in the, in the technique. And we've advanced patient reported outcome measures to the point now where there isn't as much error in, uh, uh, compared with something like blood pressure assessment. So we have the instruments. They're reliable and they're valid. The question is, what, is, uh, what do the measures scores mean clinically? So if I have a score of 52 on the fatigue scale versus someone who has a score of 49, is that a meaningful difference? Did the person who's got 52 actually feel like they've got more fatigue? It might be statistically meaningful, but not necessarily clinically meaningful. So the big gap is interpreting the scale scores in a way that we can integrate them into clinical practice. And that's work that we're actively involved in. And I know that there is, in Australia that people are involved in that as well. Mm -hmm.